So as you can see here, we have our blank plate. We actually drew out the size and dimensions of everything. You can see the TV, mantle, and fireplace here. And we like what we see, so let's start bringing it to life. So when you buy your lumber, you want to make sure that you hold it up to your eye like this and look down it and make sure it's not too big of a warp or a curve or anything like that. You want to get it as straight as possible. This one looks pretty good, especially for your studs, you want it straight. But if you do end up buying a curve board, you can use it for the shorter lengths to kind of cut it up. But you got to keep an eye on this when you buy your lumber. Alright, so we're going to start with the sides of the fireplace and we're just going to build some basically stud, stud framed walls. So our first measurement is 93. And this is already a factory cut edge, so we can use that. Bring it down. These are 96 foot studs, so we're only going to be cutting off three inches. 96 is eight feet, and our ceiling's eight feet, but I, well, I don't want to stand up the wall and have it hit the ceiling, so we're going to go just beneath that, and therefore, when we stand it up, it'll it won't damage the ceiling anything like that. Okay, so we've made our mark with our our. Um, tape measure but now to make it cut on the saw it's a lot easier when you have a whole line so this is what a speed square is for so you hold it up against this edge line it up to your mark take your pen and then extend it all the way down and now you have a nice line that you can cut on So this is a top plate and bottom plate, and these should be 18, good job. And since the two edges will be where the other studs are, you don't really need to mark those out, you just line them up to the edge. But the middle stud will be at, at nine inches, and studs are two by four, but they're actually 1.5 by 3.5 inches. So you wanna measure three quarters in each direction to get the two edges of the board. So this would be nine and three quarters, and eight and one quarter. So that's the width. Then once you have those marks, you can take your speed square and transfer them to the other board. Now make sure that these are perfectly in line, which they are. Then you'll line up with your mark. And so now those are marked out in exactly the same spot. So now when you take these like this and put your studs in between, it'll be perfectly in line. God, new BS truck, man. Hey, man, it's Christmas. Now you can use nails here. We're using these because we don't have a framing nailer. This is going to take a little longer, obviously, because with a nail gun, you can just go boom, 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 boom. But it's whatever. It costs a couple hundred dollars for a nice one. So, and we're not doing a huge amount of framing, but it's gonna take a little bit longer. But two for each. So if you just do one, it can obviously turn. So you want to do two in each. Make sure it's everything's level. We're doing it on the floor because that way you know the whole thing's level. If you're doing it in the air, like you don't know what's gonna be concrete and stuff. So let's get to. So as you can see here, we're just drilling some pilot holes throughout the base just to avoid any splitting in the wood when we do the final screws. Alright, so we just finished both the walls with one's here and one's off screen right here. We're going to stand them up. Hopefully they don't hit the ceiling, we're hoping. The ceiling's just like an inch over eight feet, and we made these eight feet exactly, so as we stand it up, hopefully it doesn't scrape the ceiling. And it's okay if it's a little bit beneath the ceiling because the ship up will go all the way up and you won't see any gaps, but it's nice to be slightly beneath the ceiling so we can move around and stuff without you know damaging the ceiling at all. At all. So hopefully they, they look good. Okay. Yeah. This 
Careful when you're dragging it, yeah. Yay! Can you imagine how it's gonna look bigger in here? Oh, that looks pretty. That looks good. Massive. Alright, so to make the these flush it up against the wall, we're gonna remove this baseboard. So we'll do that first. And eventually we're gonna to need to remove the baseboard on the side for those cabinets, but for now we'll just focus on this back piece so not to be that precise. And then eventually we're gonna to have to take out the crown as well, but we'll do that second since that's a little bit more intricate. So first we're gonna cut the top of the baseboard that's caulked with the utility knife to get that like broken, and then we'll use some crowbars just to pull it off. We also are going to use this, just an oscillating tool with a cutter on the end, and this will be used to not cut the, the edge very finely and precisely. Okay, so these boards are the ones that are going to go horizontally on the wall and that's we're going to mount everything to. So we're marking the center of this and then going to align the center of this with the center of the wall. And that'll kind of be our base of deciding, making sure that everything is centered relative to this wall. So we, these are a 68 and a half, so half of that is 34 and a quarter. So we're marking this line. So these three horizontal uh, two by fours are basically used to attach the main media center to the wall since they didn't happen to line up with studs, which is most likely going to be the case. So these three boards are screwed into the studs going vertically and then that's what we're attaching these two side walls to. In order to reinforce the two side walls of the media center, we took some scrap and just cut some 45 degree trusses and just attached those on all three of the horizontal boards. So now we cut all the pieces to size according to, to my CAD drawing. So hopefully we didn't miscut any <laughs> measure twice, cut one sort of thing. We're gonna lay it out kind of like a puzzle on the floor here, and then once we like it, we will screw it all together, and then we'll just stand it up and put it into position. And honestly, we could mount the TV and mount at least the internals of the fireplace now, make sure everything fits, and those could stay there, honestly, until we do the ship lab. You can move like your your side piece as needed. You can slide it by the So here you can see we're just attaching the front wall to the two side walls. So now that we have the main structure up for the fireplace, we're going to be mounting the fireplace. But in order to do that, we need something to actually mount the fireplace to. So for that, we have these OSB sheets. And all we're going to do is take these extra scraps that we have, attach them to the back here. We already measured the fireplace and the screws are only about one or two inches in from the edge of the fireplace. So I'm going to screw this in from the back and then we'll be able to set the fireplace in and mount it to these boards.
In order to make the fireplace as flush as possible with the front of the shiplap, we're adding some shims here to push it out just a little bit. And here we're cutting out a recess for a plug on the back of the fireplace. So here you can see we're finally upgrading from our makeshift TV stand and we're excited to put up our new TV on the mount. Alright, so not everything goes, goes to plan as, as we all know and so we, as you saw, we put this all together, we put the fireplace in, we put the TV up and we showed our clients who are my mom and dad and they were not a fan of how far the TV was sticking out from the wall. Um, and this is also a tilting bracket, so the TV was not even vertical, but it was like tilted forward like this, which made it seem even more into the room. And given that this room is not exactly all that long, with the couch being where it is, it's a, a pretty close distance, and my dad felt that the TV was you know, sticking out too far, so he wanted it changed. I was against that, however, he is the client, and so we want to we want to please him. So we're gonna we're gonna change this design. Unfortunately, we're gonna try and make it the minimal as pop as minimal as possible, and not have to readjust everything. I would have designed it differently had I known I was gonna do this from the start, but whatever. So we want to now recess the TV so that it's flush with the ship up that's gonna go on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a box. We just took all a bunch of measurements. You can kind of see here where we have everything laid out. We're going to cut all these here and all these right here. And then basically build a box around the TV. And then we're going to recess this mount in about four inches. And we'll put some blocking back here to, to mount it properly. And then uh, we're going to just build like basically a frame all the way around the TV. And that way, the TV screen will be flush with the shiplap, so it'll be nice and flush all the way down, including the fireplace. And so, hopefully, it'll feel a little less obtruding into the room. Into the room. And yeah, we. My dad was originally saying maybe we push this whole wall back, but given that the cabinets are going to be 12 inches out on either side, we thought that design-wise, it made more sense for this to come out further. If we made it flush with the cabinets, it just wouldn't look right. And if we made it too close, like one or two inches past the cabinets, it still wouldn't look as good. We think 18 is the right, the right dimension there. So to fix the problem, we're just gonna, gonna recess it. So unfortunately, these things happen. You know, not everything goes according to plan, but it's all good. More content for you guys, so let's get after it.
So the reason I'm adding this is one for sheer strength and two the toe kick that we wanted would be what we wanted was four inches high since this cabinet is a technically a wall cabinet so it doesn't have a toe kick but we're going to use it as a wall cabinet so I'm making my own but we wanted a four inch toe kick so the 2i4 is three and a half inches and then I just bought a half inch sheet of USB to make a total height of four inches to make the toe kick so So here's a little sneak peek of next week's episode where we finally get to install the cabinets and then also get started on the ship lap. So we're excited to see this come together. Looks really good. Look at it on camera, Grant. It looks even better in real life, no? No, but like, it's like, it's crazy. Like, are we a counter today? We're gonna counter scene. Great. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. Oh.